Dan Today we have a eminent scientist, Dr. Sunil Kumar Deshpuk. He will speak to us on natural products by fungi. Supriti, you can please welcome. Supriti. Hello, Supriti. Ask a little Hello, Supriti. I think uh, she is offline because of some problem. So, Dr. S.K. Deshmukh, kindly start your talk and we'll talk later on about you. Yes. Okay. So, on set, I am thankful to Professor Deshmukh and Dr. Sanjit Singh for calling me. The topic of my talk is Natural Products from Fungal Endophyte. Slides are not moving. Uh, yeah, it is the first slide only. Yeah. So, you please try again. Or you can make it small and try. Okay, yeah. Maybe you can make it small and try. Just one minute. Yes. Uh, so, in the meantime, may I start with the introduction? Yes, yes, please. Sorry, sir, my network was really unstable. No problem. So, um, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining. My name is Sukriti Bala, and I'm a member of MBSI. I appreciate everyone joining the meeting for the talk today. I will be starting with a brief introduction. The Microbiology Society of India was established with the aim to encourage and support research in microbiology, along with cooperating and affiliating with international organizations in the field of microbiology in 1996. The society has many renowned microbiologists, teachers and researchers, students and thousand life members. I would like to welcome the founder and president of Central Council of MBSI, Dr. Arvindesh Mukti, a former professor and head of microbiology department at Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar Marathwada University, Aurangabad. He taught classes in the field of microbiology at the postgraduate and graduate level and teaches introductory microbiology. Beyond his academic work, he is a writer and a keynote speaker. I also welcome the president of the Tri-City Group and also the former head of environmental biotechnology and microbial biochemistry at ESIR MTech, Dr. Sarinji Singh. He top 2% of global scientists for three consecutive years. He has served in MTCC and GeneBank, which is now the first IDA in India. Been a member of Task Force, National Biodiversity Authority, Chennai, and two WSCC committees. He has also been awarded the Loyola Environment Award, Lifetime Achievement Award 2022 by St. Xavier's College, Ranchi, and Lifetime Achievement Award 2023 by Shulini University, Solon. His publications are in the High Impact Journal and Articles are highly cited in literature with over 18,550 citations, H index 59 and ITIN index 174. Dr. Swilanjit makes very sincere efforts and works very hard for inviting 
eminent scientists from diverse field of research for the talk. Now, I would like to welcome speaker for today's talk, Dr. Sunil Kumar Deshmukh, a former fellow and area convener of Department of Nanotechnology from the Energy and Resource Institute, New Delhi. Dr. Sunil Kumar Deshmukh received his PhD degree from Dr. H.S. Gaur University, Sagar, Madhya Pradesh, India, in year 1983. Dr. Deshmukh is veteran industrial mycologist who has spent a substantial part of his career in drug discovery and developing the microbial culture collection of Hocus Merian Rosal Limited, now called Sanofi India Limited, Mumbai, and Piramal Enterprises Limited, Mumbai. His core expertise is in discovery of antifungal, anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, and anti-diabetic compounds from fungi and have discovered several new compounds. He has to his credit eight patents, 155 publications, and 21 books on various aspects of fungi and natural products of microbial origin. Currently, he is the president of the Association of Fungal Biologists and MSI Mumbai, and an advisor to various biotechnology industries with brief insight. That's all from my side. Now, without further ado, over to you, sir. Can you please mute your mics? Hello. Can you please mute your mics, all of you? Yes, sir. Please. Shall we start? Yes, you can start now. Uh, the topic of my talk is natural products from fungal endophytes. I will be talking mostly about the work done in brief in Hex Pharmaceuticals and Pyramal Enterprises, Mumbai, and lately in the Terry Dickens Nanobiotechnology Center, New Delhi. This work will be giving some idea about the natural products from endophytic fungi, their anti-cancer property, antifungal property, antioxidant property, and later part, the pigments produced by these fungi and their application in food. Is it moving or not? Not moving again. Oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If we talk of natural products and their derivatives are historically been used as innovative source of therapeutic agents, around 1,000 NCs are introduced between 1981 to 2021. Halfly, almost 50% of them were of natural product derivatives. 75% are in the area of infectious disease. 60% of remaining 25% are in the area of cancer, that is Texol. Vincristine, Vinblastine, Andreamycin, cholesterol lowering agents, the statin, the top selling drug of today are in natural product origin. Then some of the other drugs, like immunosuppressant drug like cyclosporine, FKS 506, Repamycin are also natural product origin. If we see some drugs from fungal origin, that is Glenia from Isaria, Sandmoor from Tolipocladium. Cardiovascular statins are from aspergillus, beta lactams for infectious disease from particularly started with penicill penicillium and cephalosporium. Texol initially isolated from the Texas Bacata, after that by Professor Stowell from Texomyces andriana. If we talk of endophyte, it's first described in 1866 as a microorganism that colonized internal plant tissue. Paterni 1991 defined them as microorganism that inhibit at least one part of their life in plant inner tissue without causing any apparent harm to the host. Almark 1997 described them as those that may be isolated from surface life plant parts are extracted from inner tissue and cause no damage to the host plant. If you look for some anti-cancer compound which are isolated from endophytic fungi include Texol, Vincristine, Vinblastine, Campothecine, Photophototaxis. The idea of this get miss getting these compounds from entomitic fungi, this was considered that this can be alternative source of these compounds, and this will also help in saving the world diminishing biodiversity. When I started working with endophytic fungi, particularly from Indian flora, the question was asked: why you want to do? You have to justify your project that why you want to work with endophytic fungi. Some justification given where we have two biodiversity hotspots 
non phytogeographic non phytogeographical zone 35% plants are endemic different geographical region climatic zone ranging from tropical to alpine more than 8000 km of coastline nine wetlands in india if you see the red red dots in this indian map this shows from which area we have collected the plants in our study starting from 1985 till 2014 initially we have selected medicinal plant with the traditional healer getting their properties followed by getting some plant mangroves aquatic plants ferns some marine algae some fresh water algae so these were the plants which we are selected this is the general method for isolation of endophytic fungi from the leaf we take a fresh leaf wash wash in tap water sterile with alcohol 2% and sodium hypochlorite again 70% alcohol wash with water make a small pieces put in a plate where while putting we keep half portion of the leaf on cut piece onto the inside the medium and half is in the air we get a colony and then we transfer these colonies to the slants so this takes almost some time endophyte start after 2 weeks to 4 weeks we collect we use a control whatever leaf which is sterile that we keep onto the plate one side for 15 minutes then reverse side other side to the another plate for another 50 minutes if something comes onto that that we consider that as a contaminant and we don't consider them as endophytic fungi this is the workflow these are the various sources what we use this is the colonies what we get pure culture then we get a for we do a two stage fermentation using different synthetic and and natural media we did, we make extract put it on the micro titer plate it is preserved at minus 86 86 degree celsius then we get, go for activity referment them whatever compost to it go to natural product chemist these are some of the colonies which we got from the active cultures belonging to foma fomopsis and other species like xylaria and so on so these are the active cultures which we have extensively worked if you see the fermentation process we get a pure culture seed medium production medium different medium jpeg doc sebrot saga 267g myg half strength pd pdb and then we put the, then we shake them for at least 5 to 6 3 day to 5 days and after 5 days of incubation we put methanol into this while putting methanol we has to carry very careful we have to keep in cold condition because whenever we are putting the methanol there will be exothermic reaction and then because of exothermic reaction the bioactive compound may get denaturized so we have to be very careful while putting ethanol then we whatever broth comes out of that we concentrate it and go for anti infective screening then concentrated broth is diluted to the no, to the actual volume what was initially it was there then we extract the ethyl acetate pass it through dye and resin two different portions concentrate it dissolve in dmso and make a 20 mg per ml solution and screen for anti cancer anti inflammatory and anti diabetic activity these are the cell lines what we use normally we use six cell lines that is non small cell lung cancer h460 human leukemia cell line hl60 colorectal cell line sct116 breast cancer mcf7 pancreatic carcinoma mi mis pa6ca3 normal human fibroblast cell line that is wwi38 as a control nci usa use 60 panel we had 60 panel of cancer cell line we had the collaboration collaboration in germany with the onco test they use 40 cancer cell line for anti inflammatory we use tnf alpha and il6 in primary screening what are come positive go for human pbmcs nf kappa b inhibitor cox2 inhibitors for anti fungal screening we use a battery of microorganism which includes candelvicans candelvicans atcc 14503 flucosol resistant sense to stain up candida cruzi candida glomerata cryptococcus neoformans aspergillus fumigatus and so on whatever samples which is showing activity will go for reproducibility if they are showing a good spectrum of activity then we produce about 3 to 5 g of crude extract and those crude crude extracts go to activity guided isolation and 
characterization of natural product here i would like to tell this is a not a work of one group it includes a microbiologist chemist structural association chemist pharmacology patent and so on so many groups are involved in a one project when we are doing this doing the this type of bioactive isolation of bioactive compounds so preparation of crude extract we dissolve in polar and non polar solvent whatever is not going in that it will again dissolve in water and go for screening active fractions are chromatograph and again screen whatever fractions coming positive they go for dereplication we do the hplc uv lcms database search and whatever pure compound comes it goes for spectroscopy and then using nmr mas hrms and it goes for structurization there are chances that we may get a known compound and unknown compound known compound goes to patent department for patent search for any possibility of semi synthetic work if it is showing some possibility then it go for semi synthetic work unknown compound go for tk studies to pharmacological department if they say it is okay then it is considered as a lead compound for develop drug development but after before taking that we have to see what is the mode of action of that particular compound or how it is working so i will give you one example this is a redis call monardine biological activity was anti cancer anti inflammatory fungus humicola foschiatra plant sources mangifera indica in vitro activity ic50 value was 0.02 to 2.7 micromole in different cancer cell line so in this here you can see the structure of that compound and this is the activity in five cancer cell line and one normal cell line if there is a difference of two log in this means normal cell line and cancer cell line then only we will take forward if it is not showing two log difference we will stop the work at that point of time after that pathway mapping study is done to see the mode of action in this case we have selected pank one cell line and this was done through high content screening here different type of proteins were used this is cell line is treated with the redisicol and we see the blue strain as well as the red strain blue strain is because of hex dye 3342 which which dye the nucleus and if and this daylight dye the protein here you can see there is a 60% and other cases there is more miss up regulation of the compound in other case there is a black, more in this case there is more reddening that is the up, up regulation and if it is a less if it is a more reddening in the control then it is a down regulation so in this case there is a 60% and 80% of up regulation in the p21 and p53 here in this case there is a down regulation in the case of nf b that is 51% and stat 3 that is 73% in other case also there is a down regulation of 43 and 56% and in this case levase caspase 3 there is a up regulation of 40% so these are different proteins we are treated means we are treated the pank cell with the redisicol and check against the different proteins so if you put in graphical stage so this will be the stage where we can see prb state three and others are down regulating and some are up regulating we have if you want to interpret then redisicol up regulate p53 p21 in term down regulates prb there is g1 arrest in other in sim, similar way pakt nf kappa b stat 3 they are down regulating in term of regulatory of cytosine c then caspase k9 caspase 3 and finally there is apoptosis so we know how the cell circle or what is the this is the summary of how it is working this is the another example where we got a compound that is pm181110 biological activity nc cancer unidentified compound this was style mycelium mean ic50 value was 0.089 micromole in 40 cell line this is the structure of the compound 419 molecular weight two sulfurs this is the colony morphology and we have got the patent over this if you see the activity this was showing the selective activity in lungs as well as the pancreatic cell and mean ic50 value was as i shown 089 lung 
0.059.0159. After this, we see the selectivity. What is the selectivity? So, if you see there is selectivity is 5 out of 6 in lung cancer, cancer cell line and pancreas 3 out of 3. So, this shows that this is selective for these two types of cell lines. If you see the genographic model studies in that class also, it is showing the activity in lungs as well as the pancreatic cell line. Before deciding any selectivity, we also check the IC90 value of these, um, these particular com uh, these compounds. Another example was ofibulin A, activity anti-cancer, fungus was bipolaris, plant source was parthenium, in vitro activity was about one microgram per liter in different cancer cell lines. This is the culture morphology and this is the structure of a compound. Similarly, treated with different treated with a different cell line, different cell line that is the negative breast cancer cell line MDA MB two three one, and for two hours and twenty four hours activities are reported over here, and this is the analysis densitometer analysis. So this shows this is selectively active against particular proteins. Similarly, we see the effect after twenty four and forty eight hours. And this is of 24 hours. This is after 48 hours. And last one shows the apoptosis induction. So this is also another important compound where semi-synthetic semi -synthetic work is going on. Then next one is Homopsis longicola. Plant source was Nectanthus. Compound was ultrasolenol A. Mean IC50 was 0 0.005 micromole in 34 cell lines. Structure. Here shown is ultrasolenol A. This is the colony morphology after keeping two weeks in light. When it is put in, in dark, it is not producing any bound pigment. And when we keep two weeks to three weeks time onto, into the dark, it produces crystalline structures. Crystalline structures are mostly ultrasolenol and its derivatives. And uh, we can isolate pure compound just picking one needle. So we will be getting almost 80 to 90 percent pure ultrasolenol. If you see the activity in this case, this is the active against various cell lines, but no selectivity was found with this. So we stopped this come working on this compound at this point of time. Though this mean IC50 value was 0 0.005. After that, I would like to highlight one more compound that is having antifungal, that is antifungal compound. This was isolated from Mesuzel Sudavai. Later on, it was named as Aspergillus mullendensis in 2016. Biological activity was against Aspergillus and Candida. Here I have mentioned only, only mentioned here that is 0.03 to 4 microgram per ml. This name mullendensis is given because it was isolated from suburb of Mumbai that is Mulun. And where the, our hex center was there. This is the structure of the compound. Sir, may I interfere a bit, uh, little, because I think the slide is not moving. The previous graph is showing. The radicicle graph is showing. Now? Not yet, sir. Okay. The radical graph is showing. Now you 200 see 200 and yes, yes, we can see, we can see. I think I have to reload. Other people can see it. Yes, yes, we can see. Yes, sir, we can see. We can see very clearly. So this compound was this culture was isolated from suburb of Mumbai, that is Mulun. That's why. This, the name was given Mulundo candin based Mulun and Echino candin class of compound. That's why this name was given. Actually, first we isolated the compound Mulundo candin and when we took large thousand liter batch, so in that batch we got another compound with one oxygen less that was deoxy Mulundo candin, but it was showing better activity than Mulundo candin. So this was considered for further work for semi synthetic work. 
and this portion water blue portion is there that was modified and the name was given as immunocandin. If you see the activity of immunocandin is showing better activity than present antibiotics that is amphotericin B, goraconazole, caspofungin and micafungin both in each cell as well as filamentous cell. These are various strains of candida and these are the strains of various filamentous fungi. So which shows that it is better than that and in vivo activity is also superior but so far they have not, so far Sinophi has not marketed this for reasons known to them. What type of compound we isolate in cancer? These are some few representative. These are some in the inflammation, anti-infectives and diabetes. So these are some compounds. I'm just showing the representation. We have got more than 200 compounds with various biological activity and almost 30 to 40 percent of them are new. When we started work, initially started working in 85, what we thought that we are getting new compounds, the movement, the source were exhausted, then we are again getting the known compounds. For getting new compounds, we have used the different strategies, that is the epigenetic approach for metabolic diversification. Epigenetic modif modifier brings changes in genetic expression without any alteration in DNA sequences. These modifiers using chemical inhibitors, mostly HDAC and DNA inhibitors, are inducer found to be effective in stimulating the transcription of annotated silenced biosynthetic gene cluster, thereby resulting in the production of production or enhancement of variety of secondary metabolites. This is the normal process of production transcription translation, and finally proteins and then natural product, whatever is there. We use different DNMT inhibitors like 5-azacidine and others, HDAC inhibitors like sodium butyrates and others. I will give you an example. This is the culture. It was PM07-52387, Cephalotheca febuluta, isolated from Eugenia Jambolena in the Goregao. Biological activity IC50, IL6, 6 microgram, and TNF alpha 10 microgram. This is the structure of the compound. This is the culture, morphology. Basically, similarly, what I shown for ultrasol and all, this was also not producing any compound in the dark. The moment by mistake we have kept this plate outside for washing, then we saw the pigment, and uh, we again have we inoculate large number of plates and isolated the compound sclerotin. When you can see this is the HPLC picture of the scolotin producing ex crude extent. And when we treat it with 5 azacidine, then we got a special enhanced peak of scolotin and two, three, four new peaks of the compounds which were not observed in the case of without treatment. If you really see, this is the peak of 7.6 RT. Of this collagen, and this is the new compound which was produced in the large quantity. That is 24.1 RT. Another example was the SPLS fumigators. When first one is the treated, untreated one, second one is the treated one. The compound, if you see here, here this is the compound which was producing in very last, very small quantity. It has enhanced producing in the presence of valpuric acid. You can clearly see here, this is the peak where it is very small peak, and this is very big peak, and all other peaks were disappearing. So this shows that epigenetic modification can either give the different compound or it can enhance the production of a compound. Then we tried co-cultivation. The idea was that there must be microorganisms must be talking to each other for their survival or there may be quorum sensing. And if we do the similar type of environment to them, so they may produce the different compounds. We have got the cultures from Nothopoditis and they were the Campitutin producer from the Western Ghat, particularly from the Mahabaleshwar. Colitotrichum and Coronispora were isolated. And then single fermentation were done. And the yield of the compound was 
33 milligram and 69 milligram respectively in the both different both the stains with differently f1 and f2 stains when we co cultivated them so these were gotten these were enhanced to 146 so this is one example where if you do the co cultivation then the yield may be enhanced and in other case which i am not showing here the two different compounds were produced the structural elucidation is under progress so the whenever they will communicating to me i will may, i will patent publication will patent and publish it another approach what we tried were by transformation because some compounds they are produced in very small large quantity but property is some of their derivatives so in this case astragaloside 1 and 2 were treated with penicillium and penicillium has the deacylation activity and it was it has converted to astragaloside 4 which is normally used in food and pharmaceutical industry so this shows that epigenetic modification co cultivation by transformation and this type of process can get more diversity what we are not getting the normal cultivation process then after that we had the facility of genome gene genomic the sequencing so we thought that why not to apply, apply this for getting the bioactive metabolites using bar bioinformatics tool like bioinformatic database the idea was to predict the presence of gene cluster responsible for synthesis of novel class of compounds as well as novel scaffolds infer the phylogenetic state of gene cluster towards stain improvement of a particular compound correlate the productive gene genomic data with chemical fingerprinting of culture which is known to produce particular bioactive class of compounds so this was some of the approach for genome mining the major group of secondary metabolites what we were looking for polyketides particular polyketides non ribosomal polyketides terpene then these are produced by synthesis or synthesis but and the modification is done by dehydrogenases oxygenases hydrolysis methylases oxynodirectase and transferases so what was the idea that when we know the genome wide location secondary metabolite genes are organized in a discrete cluster around the synthetic genes we started working with actinomycin particularly in the streptomyces colicolor and technology platform used by the iron proton and alumina bioinformatic tools for antismas smof clean crystal cluster scan this is done with the help of the, our bioinformatics group we were less involved in this the data is given by them the total size is this was mb terminal inverter inverted repeat is 21.56 this player so these are our data given by them then what we found when we were doing the normal media so we were getting only few compound based on the genomic sequence we modified the media so we started getting different antibiotics cdo4 pigments lipids and other compounds so these are the diversity of the compound from in the streptomyces coli color by using different media using genome sequence then after that we came means we were interested in doing genome editing but we were not getting good support but after discovery of caspar cas9 which is versatile and user friendly genetic tool for targeted gene knockout and integration we got a person who was working with caspar cas9 and we took his help and modified particularly the color producing compound which was in co where the citrinine was co produced with this so the story behind this is that this is consisting of Two nucleases, two element that is Casper Cas9 nucleus and SR RNA. SR RNA have two small units that is CR RNA and trace RNA. Then synthetic SR RNA binds to Cas9. Please unmute. Hello, please mute your mics. Please close your mics. Yes. the synthetic srna binds to cas9 in the resulting complex can catalyze a double strand break in the large in the target dna comprise a 20 base sequence matching the protospacer of the srna and downstreaming a protospacer different morphic sequence here you can see this is the crispr guided rna these two units are there they are cutting the dna 
about 20 mar either you can add it or cut it and you get a repaired dna and this is the when you cutting to so this will be removed from there so by this method we can either add or you can delete a particular size of the gene from a particular dna then coming to the this is about the pharmaceutical but when he started working with terry so their emphasis was on the color so we thought that why not natural colors from the fungi so natural pigments people were getting from vegetable microbial sources and mineral sources the advantage is no toxic accumulation safe for use for all age group most natural pigment provide other hand other health benefit which includes antioxidant antimicrobial immunomodulator activity and getting the approval from fda or other food essences for this natural color is easy if you are not using any chemical for processing or extraction process if you see the positive point with synthetic color they are stable easy to produce cost cost effective have superior coloring properties and less doses is required the negative point in the synthetic colors are the chemical intoxication in drug in long term allergic and aphylactic shock, shock hypersensitivity possibility carcinogenic agent non environmental friendly that's why it is we get the means uh, advantage of the natural color and we started working with this natural color way back in 19, 2015 we were using chroma meter for checking the color pigment here if you see this gives the polar scatter plot where a1 gives the red color a minus green b1 b b plus give yellow and b minus give the blue color percentage of particular color we can see the in the plot and we can modify the medium and check the what type of pigment we are we want to have in larger quantity we use carmine which is produce from which is extracted from the insect as a red pigment pigment uh, st standard and uh, if it is not available sometime then we see the we use the beet root for the as a standard so you can see the hue angle and you can estimate the estimate the percentage color using this formula here this is a colony 7 days pigment is liquid media we extracted with uh, dichloromethane run the tlc we get different spots we have, i we run the column silica column and then check the purity in the splc and finally using the spectrum various spectra we elucidate the structure these are some of the endophytic fungi producing red pigment this is from the monoscus pomopsis species and this is alien species which is producing monoscus like pigment hydroxyquinone ultrasononol monoscus like pigment produced by the penicillium species this is another culture what we got pleuromyces this was isolated from the abyssinia marina collected from beaches near versoli beach in the aliba so this is the colony which is producing very red color using artificial sea water media colony structures you can see the scm and mycelial structure of the culture when we do the hplc ms we got various compounds with the structures like this and still we are working using different type of media and other light effect of light ph and others and phd student is still working on that this we have published in uh, frontiers in 2021 still work is on and we may expect 6 to 10 new compounds of the out of this because this culture was never reported to produce any pigment and this if if everything works fine then this may be a new species of pteromyces the similarity similar way we have also tried for antioxidant according to fda substance used for used to pre preserve food by retarding deterioration rancidity or discoloration due to oxidation this is a mechanism delay delaying auto, auto, auto oxidation by inhibiting 
formation of free radicals preventing oxidation by donating electrons from their functional group this is graphically you can see how it is working this is in the case of ascorbic acid we initially screen using dpha take a sample put a dpph radical and uh, after decoloration you can see this is the decoloration of the sample and we see the active 50% is required to decolor so we see a ec50 value of the particular extract and the compound this is confirmed by the borax assay that is oxygen radical absorbing capacity assay where we use the fluorescent probe fluorescent probe plus uh, hydrophilic or hydrophilic aphilic, uh, hydrophobic antioxidant we see the loss of fluorescent then we see the auc unit we check then uh, uh, antioxidant capacity is equal to auc unit of antioxidant minus blank this auc if you really talk of auc then auc is actually the area under the roc cut and if you see that this one to so we get almost confirmation that this is the antioxidant sometime we get a false positive in the case of dpph assay but in this case we have almost sure that this is showing the anti anti oxidant property so basic idea was to get a some compound which is having some color check the antioxidant activity confirm with two three different assays and use for food industry so this we have used we have used some endophytic fungi we were mostly collected from area near alibag where we got phomopsis pestilopsis and got known compounds in the first case this was rhizophora compound isolated of folo focrodin d dph scavenging activity was checked ic50 value was 34 micromole in the standard it was showing ic50 value was 25.8 our ic50 value was inferior to the isolated compound in another case pestilopsis dpph and abts assay ic50 value was 34.85 and 9.75 is almost parallel to the standard compound so these are the structures in another case we have got the series of compound i am reporting here only five compounds but the ic50 value we are in the range of 80 to micro 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 mole in most of the cases but when we are using using the extract the activity was better than the true so this shows this was because of some synergistic activity are the reasons unknown to us in conclusion this chemical diversity exists in endophytic fungi and can be used as a drug as such or after chemical modification by epigenetic modification co culturing and by transformation the chemical diversity can be explored at greater extent these fungi can be used to get natural food color antioxidants and enzyme for various pharmaceutical and agriculture application there is a urgent need to develop culture collection of endophytic fungi these are some of the books i have edited in last almost 10 to 15 years time on various aspects of fungi i want to thank all these persons professor colin barrow alfred dickin professor chair in biotechnology faculty of science engineering and building environment school of life science and environment science dickin city australia who was he was actually supervisor of all the student work under me at terry dickin nano biotechnology center and he is also the member of scientific committee advisor to prime minister of australia dr shilpa vedekar head corporate quality assurance laboratory parle agro limited andheri mulun mumbai she was one of the worker working on the endophytic fungi dr shivankar agrawal is scientist b now he has moved to ireland for his post doctoral fellowship dr tanuka sen she is working in oxford university as a post doctoral fellow this is the achievement for me president of mycological society of india in 2017 now president of fungal association of fungal biology 2022 onwards and this is the terry deacon nano biotechnology center where i worked last thank you very much
Thank you very much, Dr. Sunil Kumar Deshmukh. It was an excellent talk by you. I really enjoyed your talk very much and your PPTs were so vivid, so clear. You have set up a culture collection, right? In yeah. Mumbai? Yeah. So what are the cultures you have in the culture collection? See, we have all group of fungi, which includes almost 2000 of uh, basidomycetes, then all class of compounds, means hypomycetes and other cultures also. So basically, okay. we, have, we are isolated from mostly endophytic fungi. Initially, we were getting soil fungus, then we got the marine fungus and others. Very good. So tell me one thing, is mineral oil a good uh, oil for preservation of fungi? Uh, basically, what data I have collected with keratinophilic fungi for 15 years, up to 5-6 years, they are working fine. But uh, if you preserve for longer time, then there is a problem of sporulation. Yes. So we have to induce the sporulation using black light, black light or near UV light. So sometimes we get the sporulation, sometimes we don't get. And sometimes what happens that the level, the tighter of the metabolite, what is produced is reduced drastically in some cases, but not in all the cases. So what we were trying, we are preserving, preserving these cultures in this dry water as a stock culture and working them. Suppose we want to have, we have a culture which is active. We make 30 to 40 vials and use one style oil for fermenting so that we get a similar type of result because they are preserved at the same time. Right. Some fungi cannot be lyophilized. Is it right? Yeah. So in that case, you have to preserve in mineral oil. No, see what we were doing, we are making the agar blocks, okay. putting in the capillary and preserving okay. under uh, under liquid nitrogen. Okay. So this technique I learned when I was the part of IMI way back in 1983-84. So, right. but the right. problem with our type of facility that we don't have dry microscopes, we cannot see gradually what is the level of degradation or what what the effect on the of the liquid nitrogen. So what we yeah. were trying, we are putting there those cryo cryo means uh, straw into the thermocol box in keeping right. it minus 70, then putting. Yeah hanging them in the air of the liquid nitrogen and finally we dip it to the liquid nitrogen. Actually, so, mineral oil, the cultures are not genetically stable. Yeah. They keep changing very fast. Yeah. So that is one problem I encountered with bacteria. Uh, we cannot preserve much under mineral oil. See, actually, I was working with fermentation, so spore is one of the important things. That's yes. why I have Though we are keeping just to see whether if something goes wrong in one method, at least we have the culture. Okay. But uh, I was preferring style water, storing them medium with 70, 86, 86 degrees Celsius, yes. and yes. the liquid nitrogen and all those. Yes. That Sometimes is better. Cultures like Aspergillus, Fusarium, and all sporulating we are putting into the silica gel. Sometimes we are putting the soil. So depending on the nature of a culture, what we feel that, okay, it will survive in soil, so we keep in style soil. So three, four, five methods we used to try for active cultures, not for all. That's good. That's good. You have isolated so many fungal compounds like yeah. antifungal, anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, and also some of them are new compounds. Yeah. So have you patented the compounds? See, I have eight patents on that. And uh, Piramale suddenly closed the research center in 2014. Okay. So after that, uh, we have not uh, patented because the data was not with us and patent required a lot of money. Yes. So yes. after that, I do not know what company has done. Okay. And because your work is very good, you got so many new compounds. What about the cultures? Are they in culture collection? Uh, they have transferred to DBT culture collection at Pune. In Pune. Yes. Okay. We have around 50,000 cultures, fungal cultures with us. So they all transferred there. So at present, I do not know the status. Are they are they under safe deposit or are they common cultures? Uh, uh, some are safe deposit, some are common cultures. Yeah, because safe deposit is very good for you. You can still use them, right? Yeah. So, yeah, safe deposit is much better. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, 
pardon me uh, i am dr ramesh rawchar from ncmr nccs pune so we yeah. have these cultures 15000 cultures from pimr very and good. they are like in general deposit not in safe deposit very but nice when, when we have submitted that time whatever patent we have done are about to patent they were sent to that i have no detail because i left much before these were transferred to terry new delhi right no but he is saying that your cultures are still there and they are fine i am very happy about that because yes, so see, we have you isolated with great difficulty and great effort and your cultures are still safe in their hands that's a very good news and sir many people attended the lecture of yours there were about 60 people who attended your lecture that means it was a great lecture anybody has any more com- uh, uh, questions you can ask dr prakash dr prakash yes very informative and useful uh, lecture by dr sundar dev so i don't think i should dare to ask him any question first of all so such a vast uh, experience which he just shown through the different slides and the new totally new finding actually two three small questions i have posted in the chat box if it is okay for sir to read and uh, you can ask that. directly you can ask directly yes prakash you ask directly okay okay you and that is up to pay right i think i i just wanted to know initially this indopathic fungi when we actually grow them in a laboratory media yeah whether they produce the same amount of this thermal substance or whether it differs can you hear me sir no no not clear to me yeah, now no. i just ask yeah No, I just wanted to know whether when we isolate this endophytic fungi for any for any bioactive substances, yeah. and when we grow in a laboratory, yeah. blue one. Yeah. All are coming there, Kalara. Whether the please mute your mic. Bioactive substance production, whether it is the same or it varies. Basically, what we do when we isolate the culture and we see some activity, we make a when we are collecting the we are isolating the plant that time we also get some plant part also from the plant part also we make a extract out of it and we try to grow the culture into that also Only. and uh, half strength pda we don't use the full strength pda or half strength bulk extract and we compare the metabolite production onto that if it is producing only on the particular plant then we have to collect the plant ex- means plant from the location otherwise we go for the artificial medium or the natural medium so it is a, not a easy to get the compounds but we try because we have the big team of the persons working on this endophytic fungi you are uh, you, you are unmute unmute prakash unmute do sir sir when you are grow or uh, producing in a fermentation uh, we had around 1000 liter fermenter facility with us okay so when we give the culture to them so we are simultaneously working together with 1 liter 5 liter 10 liter 100 liter that way so if there is any problem then we modify the media and all those things they are the experts in fermentation so they try to do that to get because we have the standard compound are we know the standard HP, hplc peak which is to be isolated so in generally how long uh, this whole process takes sir starting with the screening till you characterize and produce ferment by the fermentation see it will depend on the yield of a particular compound okay suppose it is producing the compound and i structure is easy so we get 3 to 4 months time if the yield is less maybe some 0.5 microgram or 1 microgram or 10 microgram then it takes time maybe sometime it is a year or two also to to get the structure and in that case only if it is in of interest then only we stick to that otherwise we leave that because the yield is very low the last question is actually related to the 
epigenetic modification which you have described how that actually is useful see uh, in small scale it is useful okay but in large scale it is not that useful for our if you get a compound out of that after hmm. that we try different media yes. so we have the means uh, battery of almost 30 to 40 different media mm -hmm. depending on the structure we know what type we, it must be coming from what type of pathways so we make some type precursor and uh, use that for media but it is only done for the culture of interest not for all and that is in at the initial stage only yeah initial we, we have tried up to 5 liter not more than that this mrna vaccine also it in the similar method they think which one mrna vaccine no i don't know okay nothing okay well, nice. i would like to contact you sir sure i'll give you the number dr prakash thank you ah. okay now um, it was a wonderful lecture and i request supriti to please give the word of thanks sure sir so thank you for the such knowledgeable talk today sir it was very interesting and informative session before we conclude this call i must mention our deep sense of gratitude to the president of the central council of mbsi dr arvind deshmukh ji thank you sir i would like to acknowledge my sincere words to our respected president of tri city dr swarajit singh ji who is acting as an energy source for the growth and spread of knowledge thank you sir and i am happy to mention my obligation to the most valuable speaker for today's talk dr sunil kumar deshmukh ji for the valuable words thank you sir at last i thank all the fellow mbsi members for their sincerity thank you thank you supriti for the wonderful introduction number 1 and number 2 a great word of thanks thank you everybody